Good morning and welcome back. So doctors across San Antonio, they are saying RSV is on the rise once again. And just this week, the CDC warning that there could be a potential shortage of certain RSV vaccines. Remember, RSV, it's an illness that doctors say come across with mild or cold-like symptoms. But for those at risk, it can cause serious damage. Older adults and younger children under the age of one year old, well, they are at most risk for certain complications. So try to keep their babies away from other sick people if possible. Not always possible. Be mindful of hand washing, good hand hygiene. So the shortage CDC warns of, it applies to one RSV preventative antibody. Now doctors say because production for this has just started, they simply won't have enough supply to meet our growing demands. All right, Sarah. Well, a lot of people are going to be out and about today. Yeah. We're talking about uh, Muertos Fest, uh -huh. Dia de los Muertos. UTSA is also going to be playing at the Alamo Dome, so there's going to be a lot of stuff happening today. Uh, not even to say that a lot of people are having their Halloween parties tonight, oh, that's right. to, yes, as uh, Halloween is during Tuesday. But we have got a jam-packed forecast, so I want to get right to it. First, I want to talk about today, okay? Today, one more mild muggy day. A lot like yesterday, a little bit less rain than what we saw yesterday, but a lot like yesterday yesterday. Then tomorrow evening, that's when the cold front arrives in the afternoon. It's going to instantly become windy. Temperatures are going to drop like a rock into the 40s, and we're going to have a chance for rain, particularly Sunday night into Monday as well. And then that leads us to Tuesday. By the time trick-or-treating rolls around Tuesday night, it's still going to be chilly near 50 degrees, but it will be dry. Our rain chances will likely be ending by the time the kids go trick-or-treating on Tuesday. So let's deal with that first thing today it's going to be pretty much like the last few days with only isolated rain cloudy start temperatures near 76 by 10 o'clock throughout the day today there is a 20 percent chance for an isolated shower or storm 20 percent chance at noon when it'll be 80 degrees and then in the afternoon we're looking at a high temperature of 85 today last time we're going to be in the 80s for quite a while in san Antonio, at least over the next seven days winds are going to be from the south at about uh, five to ten miles per hour so let's move on to Sunday, Sunday afternoon and evening. That's when the cold front is going to arrive. It'll become windy and in the 40s with rainy uh, conditions as well. Right now, temperatures are in the 70s. It's very muggy, but you look at the temperatures across the state of Texas. Can you spot the cold front? It's pretty easy. It's already 59 in Dallas, 54 in Abilene, 42 in Amarillo. That's where that front is starting to push into parts of the northern hill country, but it's going to take its time getting here again, not arriving until after noon tomorrow. But this is a cold core of air. Temperatures in the single digits across the upper Rockies. It's seven uh, degrees in Cutbank, Montana right now. So take a look at temperatures tomorrow. I want you to look at the screen, OK, because it is going to be an interesting day. The first half of the day is going to be warm and mild and muggy, a lot like today. You're going to be like, Sarah, where's that cold front? Well, it doesn't arrive until around 2 p.m. And that's when temperatures are quickly going to drop. We're going to see temperatures falling into the 50s and into the 40s by 10 p.m. And it's going to become windy. Muertos Fest today will be OK, but tomorrow for most of Muertos Fest, it's going to be chilly and even there's a potential for some rain as well during the day tomorrow. Let me show you the future cast. This is tomorrow at noon when the front is on our doorstep here in San Antonio. There could be ice in the hill country. Just kidding. Sorry, scratch that. There could be ice in the panhandle. That's what I mean. I was focusing on how the front is in the hill country, but there could be ice in the panhandle. There will not be ice in the hill country. That front will be moving through San Antonio, though, by about noon and a little bit but after that, that's when we'll start to see the potential for some rain. All of it liquid, none of it ice, but it will be cold tomorrow and some rain possible after about seven o'clock. Then we're going to see in the overnight hours more rain possible. Scattered showers and storms overnight Sunday into Monday. And then to note that it will continue to stay fairly rainy uh, throughout the day on Monday as well. It is also going to be windy on Monday. We're going to see gusts of up to 
35 to 40 miles per hour Sunday night into Monday. And then just to show you the radar here, there's a few showers out in Uvalde. Take a look at the forecast of the seven day forecast. Windy Sunday night into Monday as that front moves through. Highs will only be 46 on Monday. Then Tuesday, we do have a chance for some rain early in the day on Tuesday, but skies will be clearing. Things should look fairly nice for trick or treating, although it will be chilly. Temperatures near 50 degrees, so bundle up those kids. Coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk about Mutos Fest today and the forecast for the day. We're also going to get more in depth in that trick or treating forecast on Tuesday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now, 617, 73 degrees. Yeah, thank you very much, Sarah, getting ready for the weekend. We're going to get you to the break and be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Happening today, Haven for Hope holding a fall coat drive. They're accepting any new or gently used coats, all sizes, any age, any gender. That's right. You can drop them off at Haven for Hope today from 9 a.m. To 5 p.m. We have more information at ksatcommunity.com. And what better timing? Because as Sarah Spivey said, we can start seeing 40s mm -hmm. in the next few days. But yeah. for now, time is 621, 73 degrees. All right, when we come back, a look at Hollow Scream. I was out there last weekend. It's a lot of fun. This is at SeaWorld. We'll take you behind the scenes there. We are back out here at SeaWorld. This year they have a whole new haunt. We're about to go check it out. We don't know what exactly to expect, but we're hoping it's a good time. We'll see. Scream, the biggest, scariest, and screamiest event in Texas. We have seven territories, six haunted houses, five specialty theme bars, and two special shows. We are here. We're going through our first haunt is the swamp. I'm really scared. Scale of one to ten, how much do you think we'll scream? Um, I think at least like an 85, because this is, the atmosphere out here is really intense. That's, I'm doing great. We're doing great. We're doing great. There's a lot of dark places to where there's a lot of characters that pop out at you and the reasons why guests just come back again and again. Okay, we just had an amazing night at SeaWorld. They've done it again. Hollow Scream, amazing. Very scary. I loved it. New haunts this year. You have to check it out. Highly recommend. Something for everyone. I want to come back already. I was scared, but it was worth it. All right, RJ Marquez. Mm -hmm. We're going to say you're a hollow scream correspondent there you here. Go. You were there. Our house Inside animals. look. How are we yeah. looking? Uh, it was great. I've been there the past couple of years, and every year they kind of up their game. So uh, thanks a lot to Chuck Carew out there, the SeaWorld crew, getting all their stuff ready to go. Uh, they had an ice cream shop of horrors. Ooh. I would say that that was uh, kind of the scariest haunted house. They also had a swamp thing situation going on <laughs> out there and uh, like a graveyard ship, uh, an Atlantis themed ship. So yeah, it's a pretty cool setup this year. And every year they do something different. There was a zombie one too. That was pretty neat. Yeah. So Joy gave her one to 10 and an 85. What is your realistic within the parameters of one to 10? <laughs> From 1 to 10, uh, I'm going to give it an 8.5. Okay. Was, yeah, With 8. the decimal. 5. That's pro With score With the decimal right there. in there. Yeah, right. it was a good time out there. Time now, 627, 73 degrees. All right, and switching gears, dozens of hotel workers without a job after the city of San Antonio plans to open a shelter for the homeless at their place of employment. We'll tell you what's being done for those now unemployed. That's still ahead. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Saturday. It is 630 this morning. And look at this. 
We got a special guest, RJ Marquez, joining us dark and early. Only for you, Max. Aww. I only get up early just for you, Max, and Sarah as well. Uh, <laughs> Sarah's hands are like, what's going on here? Uh, let's yeah. take it with Sarah, see how things are looking out there. I'm so. happy you could join us today, RJ. Yeah, you know, one last warm day before we see the big weather change, the strong cold front arriving tomorrow. Let me get you through your day today. Outside right now, you can see that it is cloudy. It's very muggy. It's 74 degrees out there. Winds are from the south side southeast at about 10 miles per hour. We also have a few isolated showers. I was driving around San Antonio earlier, a few sprinkles, but we're not going to see as widespread of rain as what we saw yesterday. However, rain is going to be possible at times, just brief passing showers. Let's actually go back to the radar and let me show you where some of the rain is right now. There's an isolated shower moving through Sabinal to Hondo along 90 and then out east toward Gonzales. There's some rain as well, but fest going on today uh, and it is going to be really nice uh, outside, just a little muggy. So 80 at noon, 85 at four for the high temperatures this evening will be in the 70s. No major issues with Mertos Fest today, but tomorrow we are going to see a drop in temperatures in the afternoon. Tomorrow cold front arrives and that drops our highs into the 40s and 50s for Monday and Tuesday. It also brings a potential for rain during the second half of the day tomorrow and throughout the day on Monday. There is a lot to talk about in the forecast, including your trick-or-treating forecast those details ahead in just a few minutes thank you sarah so we've been talking about it through the morning if you are out and about this morning pack your patience because it is a jam-packed weekend here in downtown san antonio there's so much happening it is important to plan ahead navigate through the traffic and really make the most of the weekend yeah the end of october always a very busy weekend here jonathan Cotto hit the streets of san antonio and shares how a lot of you will be gearing up for all of this fun between UTSA football at the Alamo Dome and Muertos Fest at Hemisphere, it won't be a bad idea to plan ahead for this weekend. Leslie Rivera, who is preparing for Muertos Fest, says with all the construction happening, it's all about being flexible. You know that construction's happening all the time, so we just kind of adjust as we see those roadblocks. It actually happened this morning coming in. We thought we were going to come in on the side of Cesar Chavez, and then ended up having to last minute, like, oh, we got to come in through Nueva. The city of San Antonio Center City Development and Operations Department says there will be several street closures in the downtown area, as well as the potential for heavy traffic that'll make it hard to get around. You can park at the Bear County parking garages and they're just about two blocks away from here, or you can take the Via Trans. But some are choosing to drive in. Normally I will be driving down. I normally don't take the Via and stuff, so. Are you prepared to deal with the road closures and the traffic? Oh, absolutely, because there's always some uh, routes that you can take and they have everything written out so it's easy to find a parking spot. The city says Via's special event service will be available for the UTSA versus East Carolina game on Saturday at the Alamo Dome from Crossroads Park and Ride. But some won't shy from getting to the fun by foot like this tourist visiting the Alamo City from Kansas City hyped for Muertos Fest. This celebration is going to be it's going to be so good. Although no major widespread downpours are expected this weekend, some folks say it wouldn't be a bad idea to come prepared. This event is rain or shine. Get your umbrellas and come downtown. There's over 90 altars here. Everyone has put in so much time and effort to honor their families and loved ones, and it's really a sight to see. For more information on how and where to stay updated on street closures and public transportation, visit KSAT.com. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. The Board of Trustees for Northeast ISD still has not picked someone to fill its District 2 seat. The seat used to belong to board member Terry Williams, but she passed away months ago. Friday morning, trustees voted to pick her replacement and ultimately failed for the second time this week. They have candidates for the position, but have not come to an agreement on one of them. Now, trustees are trying to see whether they can keep the seat open until next May's election. For now, the board is scheduled to meet on November 13th. All right, a bit of controversy happening downtown. The city's plan to open a homeless shelter at a downtown hotel. Well, here's the problem. It's leaving dozens of workers looking for new jobs. Starting Wednesday, the city of San Antonio, they are leasing the Holiday Inn on Cesar Chavez and Santa Rosa for two years. They're having Sam Ministries run it. Now, Pacifica hosts hotels, which manages the Holiday Inn. They emailed a statement saying in part, quote, there are fewer than 50 employees affected by this transition, and we are actively working to shift employment to other neighboring hotels. Interviews are being held by the hotel early next week to support staff with the transition. 
Lastly, Sam Ministries plans to extend over a dozen jobs to those impacted staff. Meanwhile, Sam Ministries confirming it had 24 job opportunities because of the site, and they've sent job descriptions over to the Holiday Inn team to distribute. But the spots, well, they aren't specifically held for hotel employees. All right, we've officially hit our sixth day of early voting in the state constitutional amendment election. According to the Bear County Elections Office, as of Thursday, more than 15,000 people have cast their votes in Bear County. If you are not one of them, you still have a full week left to do that. Scan the QR code you see right there on your screen to find out what you need to know about the election. Early voting ends on Friday, November 3rd, and the polls are open daily from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Well, look, we know a lot of you out there watching right now, you have kids, and you know that sleep-deprived parents will try almost anything to get their babies to go to sleep. Absolutely. So what about weighted blankets and weighted sleepwear for babies? Well, with October being Safe Sleep Awareness Month, 12 on your side is Marilyn Moritz. She has a warning from pediatricians to know before you buy. Weighted blankets, they're a hot trend for adults, but baby products, that's a hard no from the American Academy of Pediatrics. The doctors warn that weighted baby blankets and weighted sleepwear, like swaddles and sleep sacks, are not safe. One of the risks is suffocation, so the babies can actually get trapped under the weight of the blankets and not be able to uh, breathe. Dr. Wanda Abru says putting any weight on a baby's chest is problematic. The weight on their chest, rib cage, and abdomen can limit the ability for them to move their muscles required for breathing, and this can lead to asphyxiation. Two main manufacturers of weighted sleep products for babies, Nested Bean and Dreamland Baby, both say the lack of reported injuries related to their increasingly popular products shows that they are safe. But the Consumer Product Safety Commission has said there is at least one infant death involving a weighted product. Parents will be even more trusting of products that they see for sale if they have a label that says, you know, this meets industry standards, maybe not realizing that those standards are largely written by the companies that are making and selling those products. That leaves new parents like Linda Ramirez looking for anything to help their baby sleep in the dark. It's so scary that they're marketed as safe when doctors are against it. Doctors recommend babies sleep alone on their back on a firm, flat surface with nothing else around them. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> All right, Houston is down for the Spurs' second game of the regular season. We're just going right to the highlights. Here we go. Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan goes up, but Victor Mamayama, the rookie, puts it in. So Houston up for KJ, though. Drive, kick, beautiful. Dem Vassell on the wing, knocking down three. Fouled along the way. He would complete the four-point play later, though. Look at this. Wemby, oh, my goodness, moving down low. He's 7'4", but he moves like he's 6'4". Through contact, that's an and one. Went to OT, tied to 111. That's when the Spurs would finish the job. On top, 122-126. Johnson, Vassell, and Wemby each dropping more than 20 points in the win. Wemby, a double-double. 21-12, and and RJ Marquez. Such a devoted <laughs> Spurs fan. What time did you end up going to sleep oh, last night? Oh, man. Uh, after that game, maybe about uh, 11 o'clock. Oh, I'm my say. goodness. It was, yeah, yeah. I should have uh, should have uh, maybe gone to bed a little bit earlier. I just couldn't stop watching, no. though. Wemby played great down the stretch. Mm -hmm. Had an awesome reverse dunk over Jabari Smith. Made some big free throws down the stretch. And, uh, yeah, just made some big plays. We didn't mention the three blocks yeah. and the two steals. Early candidate, defensive player of the year. Uh, let's, let's go. Let's calm down. Uh, but I, I do want to say, you know, how have you been impressed by him in the first two games? Absolutely. Yeah, he's looked great so far. Glad the Spurs were able to finish that game off. They weren't able to do it against Dallas the other night. Good win for them. One and one. Time now, 640, 73 degrees. All right, Halloween is Tuesday. And if you're still trying to find a last-minute costume idea, we'll share some of the trending ideas this Halloween season. And what is the weather going to look like for all those trick-or-treaters? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Welcome back. Well, Halloween is just days away. And if you're still getting your plan together, we have some ideas for you. Stew plants. I, I, I'm working early in the morning. It's like a whole thing, but you guys. I did a Halloween event the other oh, day. Oh, okay. You're ahead of the game. I had some Rock the Beetlejuice. Okay. <laughs> I need to see some pictures. All right, ABC's Marina Roy has some of the top trends for this Halloween season. 
Halloween is big business. The National Retail Federation says that Americans will spend more than $12 billion on Halloween this year, a new record. If you're shopping for candy, be ready for some sticker shock. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, candy prices are up about 13 percent this year, partially due to a shortage of cocoa. Consumers are trending more towards dark chocolate, and that takes at least 70 percent cocoa to make. Making more dark chocolate is using more cocoa for the same amount of candy. To try to save money, you might want to skip your favorite treat. Look for sales on the value bags and not be so specific as to what type of candy, but look for the best volume for your dollar. And what's the most popular costume this year? Google's Fright Guy search website says there's a clear number one, Barbie. So Barbie was huge. Mark Beats of HalloweenCostumes.com says they were ready with lots of choices for Barbie fans this year. We had over 50 Barbie related costumes this year and have added 20 new ones for 2023. And that's including Barbie Cowgirl, Rollerblade Barbie and the Barbie Box for, for women and girls. And we also have a bunch of stuff for Ken, too, and all the Kens. Beats says other top costumes this season are The Little Mermaid, Wednesday Addams, and Super Mario Brothers. And a surprise hit costume this year, this guy. So if you're familiar with the the little animal, uh, the axolotl, that's been something that uh, kids just really love this year. And we've been selling a ton of them. And if you're looking to go traditional, you're not alone. Google says after Barbie, the top costume searches are some old favorites. Princess, Spider-Man, Witch, and Fairy. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. I saw someone dressed as Ken last night for a Halloween costume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yours looked fantastic. You yeah, showed pictures. You, yeah. Maybe at the end of the show we can uh, we can throw it on air. But Sarah was telling us there's a lot going on with yeah, the weather. Definitely. Make sure to pack a jacket with your kids for mm. trick or treating because it is going to be chilly. But at least it's not going to be rainy on. Halloween. Until then, though, we do have an opportunity for some rain. Showing you the weekend forecast here because today, more of the same. 85, there's a small chance for a few showers, passing showers. Tomorrow, we'll have a warm start. We'll get up to 78, but after noon, a cold front will arrive and drop temperatures like a rock, bring rain, and also create some windy conditions. Let me get you through the day today. Again, more of the same today. Cloudy outside right now, 76 at 10. Chance for rain throughout the day, 20% a passing shower is possible. 80 degrees at noon and the afternoon 85 for the high temperature today. So a warm day, but our last warm day for a while. Take a look at our weather setup. You can see that we've got some of those passing showers, but mainly the showers are up to the north. Dallas Fort Worth area getting a lot of rain. If you have travel plans today, Dallas area getting a lot of rain, some snow across the Rockies and even parts of Nebraska this morning. That's all behind this cold front, which is moving through Texas. Again, this front is not going to make it to San Antonio until after noon tomorrow, but you can see that temperatures are much colder behind that front in the 40s in the panhandle in the single digits in parts of the upper Rockies there. So here's a look at tomorrow's temperature forecast. Big change. Muertos Fest today, downtown activities today should be fine, but tomorrow if you're going to be out and about, you need to bring the jacket with you. You won't need it during the first part of the day, but you will during the second part of the day. Temperatures will get up to about 78 front will hit close to two o'clock and then temperatures again dropping like a rock temperatures 50 degrees by 8 o'clock in the 40s by 10 p.m. and it is going to become windy. There's also a better chance for rain later in the day tomorrow. Take a look at the future cast. This is noon right when that front is on San Antonio's doorstep. There could even be some ice in the panhandle, but here in San Antonio likely going to see increasing rain chances after about 5 p.m. tomorrow. First across the hill country and then across San Antonio. We do not expect any ice with this front. We do not expect any wintry precipitation, but we could get some cold rain throughout the evening Sunday night into Monday. In fact, we'll likely get some cold rain Sunday night into Monday and then during the day on Monday, cold rain could continue. So that's the rain forecast for you. What about the winds? I'll show you that in just a second, but if there's one thing you can remember, it's that Sunday night into Monday. That's our best chance for rain. 
after that front has moved through, it's going to be that cold rain. By Tuesday, Halloween, our rain chances will be ending in time for trick or treating. So that is good news. Now let's talk about that wind. Wind gusts Sunday night into Monday morning. This is a look at Monday morning at 6 a.m. We could see wind gusts of 40 to 45 miles per hour. Take today, secure those Halloween decorations outside. Those lightweight Halloween decorations, secure them because it is going to get very windy. Uh, Sunday night into Monday. As for your trick or treating forecast on Tuesday, temperatures will be in the upper 40s. Make sure the kids and you dress warm. As for wind, the wind will actually be subsiding for trick or treating north at about 10 miles per hour, so still breezy, but not that 45 mile per hour gusts. And then there will not be any rain during trick or treating. It'll be dry, clearing sky, just a chilly forecast for us on trick or treating. So take a look at the forecast 85 today, 78 tomorrow before the front moves through. When the front moves through, temperatures are going to fall 40s all day on Monday, mostly in the 40s all day on Tuesday, Wednesday morning, 39 degrees in San Antonio. There could be a light freeze in the hill country on Wednesday morning, so keep that in mind. We'll keep you posted. Highs will be rebounding into the 70s by Friday and the weekend. A lot to chat about in the forecast, even more coming up at 8. I'll have details for you. Yeah, a lot of big changes there, Sarah. Okay, guys, it's now 650 and 74 degrees outside. Be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So if you didn't know, today is National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. Methodist Healthcare, they're hosting their fifth annual Crush the Crisis Drug Take Back Day event. It starts at 9 a.m., goes to 2 p.m. Medications accepted include tablets or capsules in any packaging, patches, medicated ointments, lotions, or drops, items not included. You can't drop off needles, syringes, anything of that nature. There are several drop-off locations at Methodist ERs and care nows and urgent cares if you have any questions about this just head to ksat.com yeah very informational stuff there 653 right now and 74 degrees outside all right we got a lot more to come here on gmsa but for now we'll be right back day of the dead dates back to pre-Columbian, pre-Hispanic indigenous traditions in Mexico. The Aztecs, as they conquered people, incorporated their traditions into the Aztec pantheon. So we know that these are borrowings from uh, Mesoamerican peoples. So one of the questions is why these dates? October 31st, November 1st, November 2nd. It is because that the ancient calendar, the ancient sacred calendar, these are what are known as cross quarter days. They fall exactly between fall equinox and winter solstice. So this is exactly the midpoint. And it is understood by ancient peoples that this is the moment when the veil that separates the world of the living and the world of the dead is at its thinnest. What's interesting about from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Downtown San Antonio bustling this weekend. We have so many amazing major events planned. So through the morning, we're going to help you navigate through it all. And of course, Dio de los Muertos celebrations. Part of the reason downtown will be bustling. Our RJ Marquez already down and out there helping us get this party started. We're going to check in with him throughout the morning as these preparations are underway. And of course, be looking ahead to next week, SAISD, the community, they're going to have another chance to have their voices heard. The district, considering closing more than a dozen schools, we're going to explain how you can get involved in just a few moments. And, of course, the weather, a big topic of discussion. Rain chances, a cold front in the forecast, and, of course, Halloween just a few days away. Sarah Spivey, what are we looking at? Hey Max, good morning. Yeah, you could see there on the camera that we've actually got a raindrop there on the camera. Today is going to be fairly status quo, not as rainy as yesterday, but there will be a few passing showers. Take a look outside right now. You can see that raindrop right there in the middle of your screen. It is 74 degrees, winds are calm, and it is humid outside. Here's a look at the radar. I went ahead and turned up the intensity on the radar so that you can see some areas of sprinkles streaming through San Antonio right now. These are the 
kind of very light passing showers we're going to have throughout the day. Not enough to disrupt your plans outdoors, but enough that you'll notice perhaps a few drops or two. So don't cancel your outdoor plans today. 85 degrees, more of the same 20% chance for a few showers. Tomorrow, though, a transition day. We're going to be warm and humid for the start of the day, but after noon, in the afternoon, a cold front will arrive. Temperatures will drop like a rock. It's going to get windy. Rain chances will go up by Sunday evening. So we have a lot to unpack in the forecast, including how cold it's going to be, rainfall potential, and what it's going to look like for Halloween. Will the rain hold off for Halloween trick-or-treating? Details ahead. Max. Thank you, Sarah. 60 years. That's how long this man is going to be spending behind bars for stabbing and killing two of his own family members back in 2020. 23 year old Jose Heriberto Hernandez Jr. pleading guilty after being charged with capital murder and the deaths of his mother and his sister. Also charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for attacking a different family member. Now, at DA's office, they said that Hernandez admitted responsibility for both murders and the assault. Well, turmoil continues for one of the largest school districts across our San Antonio area. The Board of Trustees for the Northeast ISD, well, they can't seem to pick anyone to fill their District 2 seat. The seat used to belong to board member Terry Williams. She passed away a few months ago, and this morning trustees voted to pick her replacement. Again, they failed. This is the second time this past week they failed. They have candidates for the position, they just can't agree on one of them. Now, trustees are trying to see whether they can keep the seat open until next May's election. For now, the board is scheduled to meet again November 13th. And speaking of school districts, SAISD hosting another meeting to discuss a proposal to close as many as, get this, 19 of their SAISD campuses. That meeting held Monday night, 6.30 at Tynan Early Childhood Education Center. That's on Gulf Street. It's all part of this ongoing discussion about the district's right sizing resolution. Now, it's studied building capacity as the district experiences a decline in enrollment numbers. Now, SAISD, they revealed the outcome of this study back in September. That's when they first proposed that 17 schools would close in the 24 25 school year, and the other two would close in that following school year. Now, the school board will vote on a final recommendation package. November 13th. Speaking of having your voices heard while well, early voting for the November 7th election, that early voting continues through the weekend. There's not any federal offices on this year's ballot, but 14 Texas constitutional amendments are up for vote, along with a few local offices. Registered voters can vote at any polling location during the early voting period that ends on November 3rd. Election day, as we said, November 7th. We have a full list of all of these amendments and the other items on the ballot. Pull out the phone, pull out the camera app, scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you right to our webpage, and that's where you can find all of our polling locations. And like we opened the show, there's a lot going on in and around San Antonio this weekend. We have Muertos Fest. We have a UTSA game at the Alamo Dome. And because of all this, several street closures in and around downtown. That could mean traffic issues. Now, the city encourages everyone attending the events downtown this weekend. Consider taking public transportation, ride sharing, biking, or just walking around. And people who go to the UTSA game tonight, they can use VIA's park and ride service. We have a lot more on this story right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And speaking of the big events happening in and around downtown, Muertos Fest. Oh, what a time of year it is. RJ Marquez, he joined me at the desk earlier this morning. He is live at Hemisphere with a preview of today's events. RJ, what's going on out there? Yeah, that's right, Max. So we made the quick drive down here. Our photographer, Alexis, and I check out Muertos Fest. Of course, it's going to be a huge day here for the city of San Antonio as we celebrate Dia de los Muertos. And of course, San Antonio does it right. This is one of the biggest events that you could think of. More than 100,000 people have attended this. And joining, this, joining me now is Claudia Loya. She's with the social media team, social media director, right, for the festival. This is your seventh year doing this. Year. Just talk about how big this event has grown over that time. Um, yeah, it has grown. I can't even describe it. Right. It's, it's just like <laughs> yeah. so big. Um, this year we're excited to expand into the new Civic Park. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have nearly 90 altars built by local families and artists 
it's it's truly beautiful as you can see some are already built mm -hmm. um everyone needs to come out check it out talk to our altar builders learn their stories and celebrate our loved ones yeah so again 90 altars as claudia just mentioned right there what other stuff can people expect i know we're going to have live music a lot of vendors out here as well and obviously you've been sharing all of this content <laughs> on social media yes. make sure to follow that account for sure but uh, what else can people expect out here so we do have a local art market curated by SA Local Market, and then we are going to have live performances by Oso Matli, um, Santiago Jimenez Jr., Los Navalatos, you know, local artists and big artists coming in from out of town. Um, and it's all free. Everybody can come and enjoy it. And again, you mentioned, uh, obviously, Civic Park is now open and available to the public. So how was that? How were you guys able to use that space sort of differently to be able to showcase this amazing event? Uh, we're so excited to be in Civic Park. We're going to have our main stage there um, and our community altar. So if anybody wants to bring a photo of a loved one, a copy, um, they can come and place it on our community altar. All right. So, Claudia, right here, I see you got the head. You got the, the crown already. You got your shirt ready to go. What is it the one thing that you sort of uh, think about or enjoy the most about Dia de los Muertos, just the celebration in general? Um, I personally love the altars, um, especially because you can you can interact with everyone who's built it. Um, some are for, you know, grandparents, some are, you know, we're going to have five Pee Wee Herman altars this year. Um, you know, just really remembering everyone that's had an impact on our mm -hmm. community. All right. And yeah, as Claudia just mentioned, that's what it's all about. Of course, Paul Rubens, yeah, he did just pass away this year. But of course, an iconic figure here in San Antonio. There is so much to see and so much to do here at Muertos Fest out here at Hemisphere. It's going to be a lot of fun. Max, I'm going to send things back to you. We're going to check out a couple more of the altars out there here, the ofrendas. And then we will get back to you guys coming up here in just a bit. Claudia, thank you very much for being with us Thanks. today. Yeah, and congratulations on all this. Thank you. Max, back to you at the studio. Thank you, RJ. Time now, 8.08, 74 degrees. All right, our coverage of this jam-packed weekend continues. Still ahead, a look at an event that celebrates Puerto Rican culture here in the Alamo City. And of course, Day of the Dead festivities, including something for everyone. We're going to introduce you to a woman who creates works of art using faces as her canvas. Why she says this isn't just a chance to connect with people in the community, but also a chance to connect with culture. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. So, Sarah, I was telling you earlier, had a wedding in Southtown last night, yeah. and the bride and groom, congratulations to the Longorias. But the bride and groom, they were nervous all day because they had the ceremony outside, yeah. they had the party outside, and there was spotty rain in and out of the area. And, you know, we do have some light rain around right now, but we're not going to see as much coverage as we saw yesterday. However, there is a lot to talk about in the forecast. Firstly, the thing to know is today we have one more warm and muggy day because things are going to change tomorrow. In the afternoon, a cold front will arrive, making it very windy. Temperatures will drop into the 40s, and we're going to see some rain Sunday night and Monday. But don't fret because by Tuesday, time for trick-or-treating, the rain will be out of here. It'll still be chilly and near 50 degrees, so you're going to want to bundle the kids up, but at least it'll be dry. So let's start with today's forecast. Outside right now with Authority Radar, you can see I turned up the intensity here. We do have a couple of those very light streamer showers moving from south to north. A bit of a nuisance, but there's no lightning. There's no danger from these showers out there right now. So as you look at your KSAT 12-hour forecast, 30% chance this morning for those streamer showers. And then throughout the day, we're going to carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower. 80 at noon in the afternoon. It's going to be in the mid 80s, 85 degrees for the high temperature and even some more sunshine this afternoon too by four or five o'clock and then very muggy this evening in the 70s for any kind of outdoor plans. Today's going to be a, the day to enjoy some time outdoors because tomorrow things are going to change. Take a look at temperatures across the state. It's 59 in Dallas and 41 in Amarillo. There's where the front is right now. You can see it passing through central Texas. It's going to take its time getting to us not until after lunch tomorrow, but still this is some very cold air temperatures in the single digits in parts of Montana. So as you look at the temperature forecast tomorrow, this is something I wanted you to take away. If you have plans outdoors tomorrow in the morning, you're going to wake up. It's going to be warm. It's going to be muggy. You might think, hey, 
I don't need that jacket. But watch what happens in the afternoon. That front hits in the afternoon and temperatures drop like a rock. We're going to see temperatures fall into the 40s and 50s in the afternoon and evening, and it's going to get very windy. On top of that, there is a chance for rain tomorrow, mainly after sunset. Here's a look at the future cast tomorrow at about noon, right when the front is on our doorstep. Parts of the panhandle could actually be dealing with ice if you have travel plans this weekend. But here in San Antonio, just all liquid precipitation. And that's going to mainly be the case again, perhaps more so after sunset tomorrow, Sunday at 9 p.m. Some showers uh, and numerous showers out there. Uh, just about all of us will get some rain Sunday night and again on Monday as the rain lingers, the clouds linger, the cold air lingers around on Monday too. And Sunday night into Monday, it's going to get very windy. I want you to pay attention to this. We're going to have wind gusts from the north at 35 to 45 miles per hour. There is a lot of lightweight Halloween decorations out there right now tie those down today because it's going to get very windy tomorrow night and Monday morning wind gusts again up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. That's real deal. But here's the good news after the rain moves through on Monday. It's going to be cold all day on Monday, Tuesday, Halloween rain should be clearing out. It's still going to be chilly, a high of only 55. And by the time the kids head out and trick or treat, temperatures are going to be falling into the 40s, so it is going to be chilly make sure to bundle up but at least we won't have to deal with the rain during trick-or-treating that is good news but take a look at these temperatures again more muggy in the morning tomorrow we'll get up to 78 but then temperatures fall 43 monday morning 46 for the high on monday with rain pretty much throughout the day and then we'll see a gradual warming trend. But in the mornings, it's going to be cold Wednesday morning in particular. Max, we're going to get down to 39 degrees in San Antonio. We may even have our first light freeze in the hill country, not in San Antonio, but in the hill country. Otherwise, temperatures regulate by the weekend. Hey, coming up, Muertos Fest going on this weekend. I have got your Muertos Fest forecast for the day today, and I just got the pollen count in pollen count. It's a doozy, so I'll have those details coming up. Thank you, Sarah. We're going to check in with RJ. All right, guys, so we are out here at Muertos Fest there here at Civic Park, standing outside. We're actually standing outside of Calavera, so coming up after the break, we're going to tell you more about face painting, what it means, and get a profile on an artist who's making sure that this is an intimate experience for everyone involved. We will be right back. Welcome back to Civic Park Hemisphere as we get set for Dia de los Muertos, a big festival taking place here today. The entire city of San Antonio has been waiting for this. We're going to have 100,000 more people out here tonight for this big event. And of course, we've been preparing for this event for months, and there is so much to do and see right here at Dia de los Muertos Festival at Hemisphere. Each vendor here is hand selected to represent the true meaning of the holiday. Take a look at how one returning artist makes sure even a fun face painting is intimate and special. Living my culture is is my everyday like experience in life, but embracing it and expressing it and uplifting it, that's something I very specifically found through art. My name is Red. I am a Traquilo body artist and community member. I think Body art and tattooing are one of the most ancestral forms of art that we all have in common across so many different cultures. And so this feels like something that is very natural to me. Tattooing led me into learning more about my roots and my culture because of the time that I spent tattooing my dad, honestly. We did a whole sleeve that was all about like his indigeneity and Mexico and being purepecha. And then the other side was about now and a whole sleeve about Texas and about um, coming here. And so that entire process was really like illuminating for me. I would see him and notice that when we were tattooing that 
he would travel and I'm like, where are you going? And he's like, oh, I'm going to my childhood. I'm remembering this, you know, in the montañas. I'm remembering like my best friend who was a cow. Like I'm remembering, you know, all these journeys. My grandmother who used to harvest alcatraces and sell them at the market. That really interested me, like where we traveled when we closed our eyes and meditated. So asking questions like that made me really think about like where I come from and what that culture means to me. This festival is something I look forward to every single year. I have people who come back every single year and, and wait for a face paint. And it's extremely exciting and uh, it's an honor to be a part of it, honestly. Some people wait in line for hours for face paint, but I, I know that it's worth it when they sit in the chair and they feel like calm and they're able to close their eyes and kind of like reflect on like why they're here and how they're honoring uh, their loved ones during this time. So I like to ask questions like, um, who are you honoring today? Like who, who is the, the person that you're honoring, right? A loved one. Um, how do you honor them? What do you leave on their altar? And so that'll give me like colors, that'll give me like their favorite kind of flower or, and then I do my best to incorporate those into the design so that it's specifically for them, you know? When I gain the trust and connection with community, it, brings me so much joy, it makes me feel like a bigger part of uh, myself. I feel a lot of um, like in Lakesh, like I am you, you are me, you are my other me. So being able to like see myself in others and others see themselves in me is a very, very important thing to me. Do you want to see it? Yes. Oh my god, this is so, I don't want to wash it off. I know. I hope that when people walk into the booth that they can see how important art is to this tradition and to these ceremonies, how it's an integral part of expression and how we honor ourselves and how we honor our ancestors. Toss back to Max, yes or no? All right, so many great stories to share. And again, our crew did an amazing job getting together all of these pieces as we get set for Dia de los Muertos here at Hemisphere. So Red, you just saw her, she will be out here at Muertos Fest all day today and tomorrow as will all the other vendors. If you want to make sure to make it out here and you, maybe you can make it out here, make sure to download the KSAT app. You get more of the event map situation there on our app and the performance schedule. So a one of a kind procession takes place here at seven o'clock, that's kind of kicking things off here at Muertos Fest. Then also Motley, yes, also Motley. We just heard from Claudia right now. She said that they are going to bring the energy. They are going to bring the fire out here. They're going to take the stage at nine o'clock. And again, if you miss the action, if for whatever reason, you can't make it out here this weekend, we're going to air all of this for you Wednesday, November 1st on KSAT 12. So we will be right back with more stuff here from Muertos Fest as we get set for what should be an amazing celebration. Back to you. All right, RJ, thank you so much. We gotta get RJ's face painted. Time now, just about 825, 74 degrees. A festival celebrating Puerto Rican culture back here in San Antonio. Remember, it took a break during the pandemic. What you can expect from the lively event, that's next. Good morning and welcome back. Like we've been saying, it is a busy weekend here in San Antonio. Another lively event taking place celebrating Puerto Rican culture. So the Festival de Puerto Rico it is back this year. COVID forced organizers to pause it for a few years, but the event finally happening this Sunday at the Shrine Auditorium. A big celebration of Puerto Rican culture. I know they hear our music all the time. So it's their opportunity to come out, move their hips, learn a little bit more about salsa dancing, about eating our cuisine and looking at our art and just making new friends. So also a chunk of the proceeds from the event will go towards scholarships for local students. Our Stephanie Jimenez will be emceeing the event. So tickets, information, just head to ksat.com. But we have a pair of recalls affecting vehicles and a common kitchen appliance. Why the companies are warning people about possible dangers. Plus, U.S. households suffering the pinch of fast rising prices. Everything from biscuits to rent to even underwear. But one major expense has offered a welcome relief in recent weeks. And one could be on the way. We're going to explain in just a few moments. Well, welcome back. We have a major development in this story in the mass shooting in Maine. Remember that mass shooting taking place at a bowling alley and a bar ended with 18 people shot and killed, 13 more wounded. 
the man, the main suspect in the shooting, has been found dead. So this brings an end to a search that put the entire state of Maine on edge over the last 48 hours. Authorities say Robert Card, the main suspect, found dead yesterday in Lisbon Falls, Maine. The Maine Department of Public Safety Commissioner says Card was found in a recycling center where he used to work. That lockdown that kept residents on edge for two days, it has been lifted. Police still investigating why exactly anyone would do this. Now, he was a trained firearms instructor recently treated for mental health issues. Other top stories we're following through the morning. The due updates in the war between Israel and Hamas, and it's happening as we speak. Israeli military says they are expanding their ground operation in Gaza, bringing out warnings to people in North Gaza and Gaza City. Reportedly, that includes infantry and armored vehicles. It's all part of this stepped up bombardment. Israel knocking out communications in Gaza and creating a near blackout of information. And back here in the United States, Best Buy recalling about 930,000 pressure cookers because get this, they pose a burn risk. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says the insignia multifunction pressure cookers sold between October 27th or 2017 and June 23rd, 2023, they have inaccurate volume markers on the inner pot. That means that some users may fill them beyond their intended capacity. That causes hot food and liquids to erupt when the pressure cooker is open. The CPSC says at least 17 people have been hurt by the appliances. Some of them have had severe burns. Affected customers should contact Best Buy for a free replacement for the inner pot and a new valve that signals when the pot is locked and pressurized. And another recall, Toyota recalling more than 750,000 Highlander SUVs. That includes the hybrid versions over a bumper issue. Toyota says a minor impact could cause mounting tabs to detach, causing parts of the bumper to fall off, and that obviously causes a hazard to the roadways. Now, the recall includes Highlanders from the model years 2020 to 2023, so obviously the newer models. Now, Toyota says it will notify affected owners directly by late December. In the meantime, you can search online if your vehicle is part of the recall. And across the country, gas prices, good news, they are coming down. Now, the national average price has dropped about 35 cents a gallon from a 2023 peak in mid-September. That climbed to a current level of 352. Now here in San Antonio, the average is about 297. The decline in gas prices largely because of a steep drop in the cost of crude oil. Also less demand, less people traveling. All this could amount to lower gas prices. However, there could be a possible escalation. Remember, we have the Israel-Hamas war that could throw things through a loop and send prices back up. All right, we know a lot of people, speaking of gas prices, are going to be driving around town today. So many great events going on. i got to tell you, Sarah Spivey, it doesn't look too pretty out there right now. No, it does not look too pretty out there right now, but all we have as far as rain goes is just some light passing showers and it's very humid outside. So take a look out of the radar. I turned up the intensity here on the authority radar so that you can see a little bit better in detail. We've got a streamer shower pretty much on the northwest side from areas in Leon Valley all the way up to the rim and then across eastern Bear County, a streamer shower from Elmendorf up towards Shirts as well. These are very light rain showers. It's just a bit of a nuisance. It shouldn't keep you from going outside and enjoying the day out there today. And again, this is mainly going to be confined in the morning hours. In the afternoon, there will still be a 20% chance for an isolated shower, but it's mainly just going to be a humid day. This is a big thing, though, that's going to impact everybody. Molds today are very high, past 15,000. So if you're wheezing in season, molds the reason. As for Muertos Fest today, it's going to be okay. Temperatures are going to be on the warm side. We're going to get up to 85 degrees, muggy with an isolated shower possible. Uh, but generally, again, a, a fairly decent day to head outside and enjoy some time outdoors. Tomorrow, though, is going to be interesting. Waking up tomorrow, humid and warm. Highs are going to be in the upper 70s. But then in the afternoon, that's when a cold front hits. And this is going to change our weather entirely. Temperatures are going to fall into the 40s and 50s. So don't get caught without the jacket tomorrow. If you head out early in the morning, you may think you don't need it. But by the afternoon, you're absolutely going to need it. It isn't until Sunday evening that we see rain chances really start to increase. There's a lot to unpack with this forecast, including how this is going to impact trick-or-treating on Tuesday. Those details I had for you in just a moment. Max.
Thank you, Sarah. All right, Dia de los Muertos festivities set to kick off in just a few hours. Our RJ Marquez already at Hemisphere as the party is getting started. RJ, you got to be happy it's not 40 degrees out there right now. No, Max, it uh, feels a little bit of a little bit of that mugginess that Sarah was just talking about. But I have to tell you, it is absolutely beautiful out here. Take a look at this community altar behind me. This is unbelievable. So these are folks here that have passed on and people sent in these pictures of their loved ones as a way to show them respect and love. And if you notice right here, obviously, we have the marigolds. They in Spanish called the Cempasuchils. Now, the origin story is that these the, the aroma of these marigolds of the Cempasuchils would help the souls of the people that have passed on find their way back to their loved ones here in the living. And yeah, so this is just an amazing, beautiful community altar right here. Just one of the many activations that we have here at Hemisphere. And joining us now are Kat and Christina. They are part of the many vendors that are going to be out here. They're also curators as well. First of all, guys, just how beautiful is this out here? It is the most amazing, beautiful event that San Antonio has. Honestly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, li I like the way you said yeah. that, just straight to the point. <laughs> okay, guys, so uh, tell, tell us a little bit about just uh, your all's role here and uh, being vendors out here at uh, Muertos Fest. So I'm Cristina, and my business name is Veridad. I've been a vendor with Muertos Fest for 10 years. Um, and last year, they brought me on as a co-curator for the art market with my business partner, Kat. All right, Kat, so you guys were telling me a little bit, uh, a little while ago in, during the break that uh, you guys have been here since the very beginning. How have you seen this event grow over the past couple of years? Oh my gosh, so my business is Barbaco Apparel mm -hmm. and we've been um, doing it for 10 years and we started at La Vita across the street and it was much smaller um, and a little quieter and every year it has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and the greatest part is that every year our community is growing and growing and growing in the spirit of Muertos. Um, and so it just brings so much joy to us to be able to be part of it and to continue doing it. Yeah, barbacoa appeal. Yeah, what uh, apparel actually? Uh, yeah, definitely like your all's vibe, your all's designs and stuff like that. So uh, what are you guys just expecting out here from the crowd? And now that we have Civic Park open, I mean, how cool is this event going to be? What's really special about Muertos Fest that a lot of locals come out. This is, I think, San Antonio's the, the heart of San Antonio events, but it's also a great tourist attraction. So I expect to see a lot of my old customers, the customers that have been with us for 10 years. I expect to meet a lot of new customers. My favorite thing is seeing all the babies that come through and are learning what the culture is about and what this tradition is for. Um, and we expect to have a good time. It's always a great, it's my favorite weekend, yeah. <laughs> all right guys, so one last time, just kind of uh, tell us again what you guys are doing. You guys are vendors out here. So again, just real quick to our audience out there. Sure, so we are, our vendors and also we curate the art market so there are 70 micro businesses artisans pop-up shops that you could come and shop this weekend today and tomorrow we urge you and invite you to come and shop the, Mer the Merros Fest Mercado um, and really watch the excitement and the magic of these little businesses just out here doing it for the weekend. All right, guys, thank you very much. Kat and Christina, appreciate you guys being out here with us. And again, 70 vendors out here. There are tons of altars as well, including, as we mentioned, this beautiful community altar out here. Max, back to you, the studio. Thank you, RJ. All right, how about them Spurs? Wemby showing up and shelling out on offense and defense. A beautiful three blocks. We're gonna have the latest on a full team win Highlights in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. Okay, so yesterday, yeah. saw some rain. Uh huh. This morning, as RJ was our weather correspondent out there, he was telling us it is, it's muggy out there. Yeah, there and there are a few light rain showers out there right now, Max, uh, but usually rain would be a big story, but our biggest story this weekend is the fact that a cold front is going to arrive tomorrow afternoon and totally change things for us. First, though, let's tackle the forecast for the day. As you take a look outside right now, you can see the rain on the camera there. We've got some areas of drizzle and mist and some light rain, limiting visibility to about two and a half mi miles out at Port SA, down about five miles in New Braunfels. So it's just a really muggy morning. And today we're going to see more of the same as last few days. 85 degrees today, not quite as much rainfall as we saw yesterday, about 20 to 30 percent chance for a few showers. The most widespread this morning and then in the afternoon only an isolated shower possible. Tomorrow, 78. 
But we are going to see a big weather change in the afternoon with the arrival of a front. So tomorrow's going to start off warm and muggy, but that front will arrive, bringing not only a chance for rain and windy conditions, but temperatures will drop very quickly. We'll show you that in a second, but again, getting you through your day today. Cloudy in a shower this morning, about 30% chance, 80% at noon with only a 20% chance for an isolated shower. 85 degrees for the high. The last time we're going to be in the 80s for at least the next seven days. Take a look at the weather setup. Again, just some streamer showers out there right now early this morning and through Eagle Pass. Really, honestly, the Dallas-Fort Worth area dealing with some storminess this morning. And you can see snow in the Rockies, snow in Nebraska. That's all behind this cold front, which is moving through Texas as we speak. It's going to take it's time getting to us in San Antonio, not until again tomorrow afternoon, but look at the cold air 41 in Amarillo and in Lubbock, it's 58 degrees in Dallas and in the single digits across the northern Rockies. So here's the temperature forecast tomorrow that I really want you to pay attention to because when you wake up in the morning tomorrow, you may think you don't need a jacket, but by the afternoon, you're going to be wanting the jacket. It's going to get up to 78 degrees right around lunch and be humid. That front will arrive in the the afternoon and temperatures will plummet. We're going to get down into the 40s and 50s by the end of the day and it will become windy too. So do not forget the jacket tomorrow. Even if you step outside and think you don't need it, you will by the afternoon. Also, that front is going to be bringing us some rain, uh, mainly during the evening tomorrow and Monday. So let's take you through the future cast. This is tomorrow at noon, right in the when the front is on our doorstep. Even some ice possible across the panhandle, but not in south central Texas. It's going to stay all liquid locally, but again, it's tomorrow night after about sunset that we really start to see our rain chances pick up. Widespread showers expected tomorrow night and Monday. We're not talking thunderstorm activity. We're talking showers uh, through Monday as well. Monday's going to be a really raw, rainy, cold day with highs only in the 40s. So when you look at rain chances, just to summarize, the best chance for widespread rain Sunday night and Monday. By Tuesday, things will be drying out for us. And I want to point out, it is going to get very windy behind this front. Sunday night into Monday, our winds could gust up to 40 to 45 miles per hour from the north. So think about that when it comes to those Halloween decorations outside. Take some time to tie them down. By Tuesday, Halloween, our rain will be going away. So here's what you need to know for trick or treating. Temperatures will be in the upper form 40s. Make sure to dress those kids warm. And winds, thankfully, will be subsiding, but we'll still have a breeze from the north at 10 miles per hour. No rain for trick-or-treating. Dry, clearing sky. As we take a look at our forecast over the next several days, again, temperatures will be uh, falling very quickly. Monday, we're going to be in the 40s all day long. Tuesday, Halloween itself, we're going to be looking at uh, highs in the 50s. We'll have more news for you after the break. Good morning and welcome back. So with the chilly weather on the way, the need for warm clothes, that is apparent. That's why tomorrow and today, Haven for Hope holding a fall coat drive. They're accepting any new or gently used coats for all sizes, all ages, all genders. You can drop them off at Haven for Hope today or tomorrow, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have all that information at ksackcommunity.com. Time now, 852, 74 degrees out. All right, how about them Spurs? I just got a text from my friend Jesse Lopez. He's excited. He says Western Conference Finals. I'm just excited about our first win. Three Spurs, 20 points or more. We're going to break down the highlights in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back. And I can say this with a huge smile on my face. Go Spurs, go. Houston in town. Spurs second game of the regular season. Let's roll the highlights. Silver and black, they got the win, but it's really, I mean, it was that bad with all the nice highlights. So here we go. A little handoff, dish and outside. Devin Vassell. And one three-pointer. That'll be a four-point play. And this was awesome. Look at this. I mean, Wemby in the bag. Floater and one. And then this two. Look at this. Wait for it. Full court driving. Beautiful pass. And the slam with the emphasis. So this one would actually go to overtime. Tied at 111. That's when the Spurs would finish it on top. 122-126. Keldon, Devin, Wemby each dropping 20 or more points in the win. And Wemby, a double-double, 21 and 12. 
So go Spurs, go. All right, we're in the midst of the World Series. Game one in the books. What a game it was. Comeback of the night with the Rangers winning 6-5. to five. So Rangers, they're up the series. 1-0, game two tonight, 7-0-3. There's a lot going on in and around San Antonio. Day of the Dead events often include altars honoring loved ones. Why one group hopes that their display will also remind drivers to be vigilant for cyclists on the roads. Day of the Dead is a merger of two traditions, Mexico's indigenous customs and Christianity. But the only thing that has changed is that it's not anymore a pagan celebration. It is a Christian celebration together with the whole church celebrating All Souls Day. This merger began when the first missionaries arrived after the Spanish conquest and they needed a plan. It was a humongous task, but then they said, let's just take their custom but make it Christian. So they took everything that they had for their cult of the dead, but Christianized it. That is why the Day of the Dead is celebrated in Mexico very differently to any other parts of the Catholic world. The combining of traditions did bring change. The natives' month-long celebration was shortened. They said, no, it's going to be only one day which is the official day of the church, the 2nd of November. The shift to Christianity occurred in very troubling times, and it was difficult for both sides. A miracle was needed. Then something happened, the event of Guadalupe. Guadalupe appearing as an Indian woman, she was probably the most important or central element of evangelization and accepting Christianity uh, in the new world. So important that to this day, you'll find her placed atop most altars during Day of the Dead. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Happy Saturday morning, everyone out there. We are coming at you live from Civic Park here at Hemisphere, the brand new, newly opened Civic Park. This is open park to the public, and this has just been an amazing morning so far as we are getting a look at everything that we're gonna have today for the Dia de los Muertos Festival out here at Hemisphere. So right now we're at the Great Lawn. This is the new lawn space. This is kind of the event space where we're gonna have all sorts of different events, but of course we are talking about this weekend Dia de los Muertos, you can see the stage back there is set. We're going to have live music ready to go. We have vendors already setting things up here. And of course, the KSAC crew is going to be out here as well. So again, this is a two-day event taking place here at Hemisphere. We're expecting about 120,000 people at this event. It's going to be a lot of fun. There are 70 vendors, 90 ofrendas or altars. It's going to be an amazing, amazing weekend out here at Civic Park at Hemisphere. Just, so just in case you cannot make it out here, we're actually gonna be taping our special that's gonna run on November 1st. So Steve Spreester, yes, the one and only Steve and Stefania Jimenez are gonna be out here co-anchoring the event. We're gonna have a lot of great pieces throughout that special. And again, it is gonna be a lot of fun. November 1st, you can find it right here on KSAT 12 if you are not able to make it out here. If you are able to make it out here, they're gonna have an amazing procession at seven o'clock. And again, music kicking off here around that time later in the evening. It's going to be a lot of fun. Max and Sarah, back to you guys in the studio. It will be a lot of fun out there. Obviously, weather playing a big part. And Sarah, as we can see on the live cam, we got some, some, I want to say rain, but I don't want to throw anything out there. Max, you're a regular meteorologist. I'm that doing is what I rain. can here. <laughs> We've got some light rain out there right now in spots, uh, you know, not too out of the ordinary from the last few days. Let's take a closer look there at that rain. It, temperatures are in the mid 70s. We've got very light rain occurring, enough to be a nuisance, but not enough to cause you to think about maybe not spending time outdoors today. This is passing light rain showers. If you happen upon a light rain shower, just duck an, inside briefly or under an awning. You can see there are a few light rain showers streaming from south to north around San Antonio. Let's go ahead and take a look out near Leon Springs and UTSA up to a Fair Oaks Ranch in Bernie. That's where we've got one of these light streamer showers. Also on the northeast side of Bear County and on the east side of Bear County, right through Alamo Heights there and up toward Madison High School. That's where we've got some of those light rain showers. Again, these are passing very light, no hazards out there, no lightning, but it could cause some issues 
issues if you are driving out and about. Just be careful on some area roads. This is 410 at Ingram North there. Uh, you can see there's some damp spots on the road. So just use caution this morning. Molds as a result of the rain yesterday and the day before. Very high, past 15,000. Molds are definitely an issue today. Uh, as for this weekend, more of the same today. We're going to get up to 85 degrees. Temperatures are going to be climbing. Rain chances dwindling in the afternoon. OK, only a 20% chance for a few showers after this morning mugginess. Tomorrow we're going to get up to 78. But in the afternoon, a strong cold front is going to arrive. So even though temperatures are going to get up to 78, you're going to want the jackets in the afternoon as temperatures will fall into the 50s, eventually into the 40s. And then tomorrow night, rain chances really start to pick up. A lot to unpack in the forecast. How is this front going to affect trick or treating? Details ahead. Max. Thank you, Sarah. 60 years. That's how long 23 year old Jose Heriberto Hernandez Jr. will spend behind bars after stabbing and killing two of his own family members back in 2020. After he was charged with capital murder and the deaths of both his mother and his sister, he was also charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for attacking a different family member. The district attorney's office said Hernandez admitted responsibility for both murders and the assault. The Barry County Sheriff's Office on a different crime asking for your help trying to find a different murder suspect. BCSO believes this man, 17-year-old Isaac Gonzalez, is responsible for killing one woman and injuring a second. Deputies say he's wanted on charges of murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. They also believe he is armed and dangerous. If you have any information about Gonzalez that can help investigators, you're asked to call the number on your screen, 210-335-6000. Well, San Antonio community members, they are putting a face to those killed by guns. Now, Patricia Castillo, with the Peace Initiative, she is leading the movement to honor these victims. Now, there's an altar that's been placed outside the San Antonio Council Chambers on Main Plaza. Anyone who's lost a loved one to a shooting is invited to put a picture there and share their story on the altar. Castillo says a lot of voices and a small amount of actions combined, they can help make a big difference in saving lives. This is a, a, a city center issue. You know, this should be at the forefront of our concern, at, at, in front of City Hall, in front of everybody, the church, those who govern, everybody needs to be concerned about this. The CDC reports that shooting deaths here in Texas has been on the rise for several years now. Well, the city's plan to open a homeless shelter at a downtown hotel, well, that plan is now leaving dozens of workers out of a job. Starting Wednesday, the city of San Antonio is leasing the Holiday Inn on Cesar Chavez and Santa Rosa for two years. They have Sam Ministries running it. Pacifica hosts hotels, which manages the Holiday Inn. They emailed the statement saying in part, quote, there are fewer than 50 employees affected by this transition, and we are actively working to shift employment to other neighboring hotels, end quote. So Sam Ministries confirmed that they had 24 job opportunities because of the site to house the homeless, and they sent job descriptions over to the Holiday Inn team to distribute to their current employees. But here's the thing, of those 24 spots, remember 50 people lost their jobs, so there's 24 openings. Well, those 24 openings, they are not being specifically held for hotel employees. Happening right now, construction for the new elementary school in Uvalde CISD breaking ground. The Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation, they've raised 75% of the funds needed to build the new school. Those who are still interested in donating, you can still do so. You have to visit the Moving Forward Foundation website. Obviously, we're going to be bringing you more updates throughout the day about the ground ceremony on air and online. Well, we've officially entered our sixth day of early voting on the state constitutional amendment election. According to the Bear County Elections Office, as of Thursday, more than 15,000 people have cast their vote here in Bear County alone. If you aren't one of them, don't worry. You still have a full week left to do so. Scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you right to KSAT.com. We have everything you need to know about the election. Early voting does end on Friday, November 3rd. Polls are open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Time now, 907, 74 degrees. The TSA has a warning for travelers this Halloween. Don't bring any weird, yeah, I said it, weird Halloween items when you go to travel. Still ahead, we're gonna tell you what's allowed, what isn't.